I want you to see this pathway here in this curriculum. Because some of you aren't yet giving. And this is the on-ramp. These, we're going to have a, a, an advanced commitment out on May 15th and then a commitment Sunday on May 22nd. And we're going to ask you to make a commitment. If this is your church home, we're going to ask you to commit to this vision over the next two years. And we're, going to, we're asking you to begin to pray about that. And some of you aren't, aren't yet giving. You're, you're, you need to become an initial giver. You've got to start that. I, I learned to give to the Lord's work in college. I grew up in a Christian home. My parents were in church every time the doors were open, right? I had that drug problem. Many of you had drug in church all the time. But we didn't really talk about giving. We weren't trained on it at our church. The pastor didn't talk about it. My parents didn't talk about it. Did we tithe? I have no idea. But it was in college that I, when I didn't have much, although as a college student, I did, because I was a waiter at Papado and I was carrying a lot of cash. So as I told Wes Hugh last week, I could sell that fish, man. I could, I could sell you fish and then I'd upsell you a baked potato. I mean, I was good at it, right? But I learned then when you really, when I really didn't have much to give, because it's it's, it's a harder step to become a giver when you when you have. But our our the, the myth we believe is at some point when I have enough, then I'll start to give. But we'll never feel like we have enough. And so we take an initial giving step, right? And some of y'all, this is your on-ramp. This is your opportunity. I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear those stories of people going, I am now a giver, a tither at my church. Can't wait. Can't wait to hear those. Pray about that. Challenge you in that. Some of you need to become intentional. You're sporadic in your giving. You're sporadic in the, no, no, you need to start budgeting for it. In our budget, we have a, a, a line item in our budget. It's our tithe. It's a full growth, 10% growth of what we make is on our top. It's, it's right there. It's like at the top of our budget, right? It's planned. It's prioritized. It's, it's, it, it, it's important to us. Then some of you need to take the step from that to a surrendered giver, that giving is driving everything else. I don't want to do that because that might hinder what I can give. I don't want to expend that resource because I really want to be freed up to give in this way. That, that's a step for some of you to take. Others, you, you might need to really realize this fourth step to be a lifetime giver, which is the top priority of your life and legacy. This is what you are about. The God has so shaped, cultivated you that this is it, right? But when we talk about generosity, here's what I want you to hear. It's about more than money. Can you say that with me, more than money? Ready? More than money. Generosity is about more than money. It's about your time. Because for some of you, it's just easy to write a check. Or are you generous with your time? How about your talent? God has uniquely wired and gifted you to meet others' needs that if you would avail your talent to him, it would lift a lot of lids in a lot of people's lives. Yeah, your treasure, your resource, your touch. There's a certain personality. There's a certain compassion. There's a certain joy, a certain humility you have people need to experience. But for whatever reason, you're withholding, you're not engaging that. Some of you, your, your tenacity, I think Paul is instructing the church of Corinth, you have withheld for you. You made a pledge, you started, and yet you haven't finished it. There's this tenacity that generosity takes, this willingness to finish. Because generosity is about more than money.